specifically trained Western artists. He didn't go after the harems and the snake charmers and the erotic and exotic, but looked at the everyday and captured, I think, in such a beautiful way that we don't have these types of insights most of the time in the Middle East. We don't have the records of individual common everyday people mm -hmm. to that. Well, we get the sensationalist stories and get these types of things, but here's the everyday. And as you see, they have very similar concerns, very similar lives, very similar issues that they're trying to deal with that we can relate to. Damascus 1917, there is no record of French Senegalese colonial soldiers being mobilized into the Middle East during the war. A Robert Hoffman sat down and asked to, to, to draw, to do a portrait of this individual and captured a piece of history that is now lost but now has been revived again. Something about the common everyday, a colonial subject pressed into service by an imperial power, by the French, in the Middle East that we didn't know about. It's very clear that these are soldiers during the war, that probably he was their officer. You know, he's sketching them doing this. They are slaughtering a buffalo to eat. Covers of magazines in the, the very famous magazines in the in Europe, Leipzig Illustrated, which is like the equivalent of Life magazine or the New Yorker here for Europe back in his day. So he's incredibly accomplished. And so all of these things go together so that it, he, a local artist with international experience that fits into some of our research agendas that this has opened up for our students to be able to use and study and look at and to interact with the public. So it fits on a variety of different levels. And I think that's why it was very attractive to the university and to the art museum in particular. The refugee crisis after the war, people being expelled, people fleeing civil war. Um, he captured it in a completely unsensationalist way. Uh, and this is exactly what's happening now. Cocoa butter, goat milk soap, or goat milk, and uh, other products to uh, kind of enhance the moisturizing value of the soap. We also have lip balms, pink sprays, and ring sprays. And I also see candles. Are those handmade as well? Yes, they are, I believe. But they're not ours. They're not yeah, we don't we don't make them personally in the store, but they are handmade. Wonderful. And all they all have olive oil. Do you know you have? To out with what's reality and what's not, you know what I mean? And this is Binghamton. My name is Mike, and I grew up on the west side of Binghamton on Riverside. I am super disappointed that I tried a Speedy, and all I got was bread and one inch cubes of chicken. The Women of Christ Church handcrafted their own kneelers for service. And, uh, after the lady that designed them put the name of all the symbols in the paper, on a piece of paper, put them in a bucket, they had to come and pull the paper out. She says, Don, I want the dough. She came down that night. Pulled it, reached in and pulled it out. She got the dove. <laughs> so. um, as you can see, uh, there's the same number of stitching on on either border, as well as the same amount of stitching in the interior of the flower itself in each corner. For every kneeler. or the fatherless child. If you do mistreat them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry and my wrath will burn and I will kill you with the sword and your wives shall become widows and your children fatherless.
art haiku. Hearts really do break. Science says it is so now. Already knew this. So there's a, you know, the, um, I have this jigsaw that my dad gave me, and then the jigsaw puzzle is the, my son. Um, where are some other ones? My other son plays the tuba, so I have a tuba. Um, where's the trumpet? Do you like some? Okay, do it. Oh, here it is. Oh, my my cousin's into that, you know, those, um, where they uh, get dressed like, not the medieval, but the things where they have the kingdoms, the eastern something. And she's in the uh, fire lizard, so I did a fire lizard for her. This is my son who passed away. He played the silver trumpet. And if you play the notes, that's somewhere over the rainbow. So this is kind of story of my life. <laughs> and, uh, going, I was in Bar Harbor. This is a seal I saw in Bar Harbor this past fall. It's just so, it's just my life. There was a lovely lady who lived in Green, New York. Her name was Teresa Danko. Teresa passed away. She had this loom and a huge floor loom. It was her wish that they be dead, they would be donated someplace, that they wouldn't be sold for monetary purposes. And so this loom and another loom were actually donated to our guild. This is the castle of the loom. 
this castle, these lovers move the harnesses up and down. On each harness, there are these plastic items. Sometimes they're string and sometimes they're metal, but they're called pedals. And you can see in the center of each one of those, there's a little eye. So when you set up your loom, your ends are back here. I would take the first end, the first fiber, and I would thread it through the first petal, depending on what my design is. So in this particular design, there's 430 ends on here. So each one gets individually threaded through the heddles. That's called slaying. So that sets your design. Once you've set your design, this, this metal area here, this is called a reed, R-E-E-D, and it has slots in it. Each of the slots is a dent. How you pull your fibers through the dent determines the thickness of your fiber and the width of your fiber. And then you attach it to the front, and then you start weaving. This is a bobbin shuttle. This is the bobbin. And you take your bobbin and you put it on your, and this is a shuttle, and this is what moves your fiber back and forth. This is the weft fiber and this is the warp fiber. What was the first one called? Your eight sort of, but it's elongated. And it just, it comes out and it winds, see how it weaves around itself like right there? And it, this was also a pattern that was found in, uh, like the burka, burka, burka funeral burials. Okay. There was another set of funeral ships they found. Again, with like hiding from the world, um, and with a little bit of this part shooting off because of um, just like a little bit of mystery to it, and that's where like the different colors in the lower part of the face. Yeah. So, uh, tell me a little bit about this piece. Uh, okay, so this is um, just like a stipple piece I made um, last year, um, inspired by my love for MC Etchner. Um, took about two hours to complete, and I did it on a watercolor paper. Um, basically, it's Helping Hands is the name of the title, and it's just helping hide her from like the outside world. Everyone needs helping hands sometimes. Yeah.
My name is Christina Hanula and I'm here at Frame to Please, Endicott, New York, a wonderful frame shop in Perm County. Maybe. Yeah, clouds and sea is what I want to say. Yeah, we're, the object is to blend the colors, but the mat not over overpowering the image itself. If, if an artist can't afford to frame, then just show your pieces. Don't put something on it just to say, I put well, it I on a frame. I don't know if you know a lot of artists, but they know everything about art. But they don't necessarily know about framing. Well, yeah. there's, there's a few uh, places, you know, points of interest. The Bundy Museum. Yeah. I love Salati. Downtown. Oh, Arazio. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. He is a genius. And he the is. people he gets from New York are so good. That tar stuff that he picked. Yeah. I mean, what is it's that? It's wonderful what he does. He puts it on flat. It, it's How amazing. How does he make the buildup, though? What is he using? Clay, or not clay, it's like a rosin that he burns? Jeez, or is it wax? He told me this a while ago. It's tar that he burns. Straight up tar. Straight up tar. Amazing. No, there's wax. There's wax? There is? Yeah, there's wax on, and then he burns the wax into the tar. Okay. Well, it works. Well, That's my friend Carol. That's cool. <laughs> it's nice that you guys get to hang out all day. It's wonderful. We're, I mean, it's wonderful. This artist, Margaret Teresa, who's from Binghamton, mm -hmm. I like her work. She brought I've seen her work at the fair. And she has um, paintings of old Binghamton in the library. Oh, nice. And they're wonderful. Cap you know, they capture. I've come to frame to please occasionally for framing. Uh, this particular piece we're working on is a lighthouse in York, Maine. It has been said that it's the most photographed lighthouse in the United States. Whether that's fact or fiction, I'm not sure, but I have photographed it several times. Came in and through, oh, maybe 45 minutes, an hour of tossing samples around and frames around, we came to a conclusion uh, of what I, what we thought would be acceptable for the finished art piece in this case photograph. I had selected what they refer to as a non-glare glass um, although it wasn't recommended to me uh, as opposed to a museum what they refer to as a museum glass uh, that kind of eliminates some of the overall reflections so I came in to change the glass and we'll wait and see what the final piece looks like. Working on a night moon, 